Uh, now to the suburb of Allen, Texas, and another warning. Some things you're about to see are also disturbing. CNN obtained this uh, photo we're showing you now that appears to show the dead shooter heavily armed and dressed in tactical gear. A senior law enforcement official uh, and source uh, familiar with the investigation tells CNN that he is 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia. In mere moments, he had killed eight people and wounded seven more. A dash cam video captures the moment the killer hops out of his car, and we are pausing it before you see him gun down men, women, and children on a busy sidewalk. A police officer already at the mall on an unrelated call took out the shooter. Uh, we have a lot of angles. Why was this guy able to get tactical gear? That shit's wild. Just to cover in all of this, CNN's Ed Lavender is at the scene of this senseless attack. Former Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis is also with us to lend us uh, his expertise. Uh, and CNN's Josh Campbell joins us by phone. Uh, Josh, let me go to you first. You have some new reporting on the shooter and some possible extremist motivations. What can you tell us? Yeah, that's right, Jim. And it, I think it's worth pointing out that thus far, the Texas Department of Public Safety, which is the agency we're told is leading this investigation, has essentially been radio silent when it comes to information about the suspect. Obviously, the community there is wanting answers about who this person was. We've been working our sources, uh, and I'm told by a law enforcement source that officials are investigating whether this Texas mall shooter was motivated by right-wing extremism. Now, I'm told that the suspect, who we know, of course, was was shot and killed by a brave, heroic police officer uh, there in Texas, likely saving countless other lives, that after the suspect was shot, authorities found that he had some type of insignia on his clothing that read the letters RWDS which police believe stands for right-wing death squad. That same type of insignia and patch, RWDS, uh, has been publicly seen by uh, various members of extremist groups at, at rallies and at protests. And so, again, authorities are... are a wow. So a, a, a right-wing militia group has labeled themselves as the right-wing death squad. That is wild. This is why... Uh, right-wing extremists, they all need to be investigated uh, and probably put in jail because they're planning to murder people. Investigating that possible right-wing extremism angle. Now, furthermore, I'm told by a source that investigators have uncovered an extensive social media presence by this Texas shooter. Now, of course, he is deceased. He can't talk. Authorities will often have to try to fan out and gather as much evidence as they can to try to piece together that motive. Well, we are learning from this source that as part of that social media presence, authorities have found what are being described as neo-Nazi and white supremacist related posts and images that authorities believe that the suspect had shared online. So well, okay. No surprise that he's a Nazi if he's part of a right-wing militia group called Right-Wing Death Squad. Um, and, you know, most right-wingers, if you know, pretty much all of them, there's probably a few that aren't, but they're, they're all Nazis. We're getting an extensive social media presence that authorities have been looking at, have been investigating, and they've uncovered these neo-Nazi and white supremacist related posts that they believe that the suspect himself had actually posted online. So, again, there's still a lot, obviously, that we don't know about the suspect. Authorities uh, tell us that they haven't zeroed in on one particular motive, but obviously this is very telling as they're gathering this evidence that you have him with this patch associated with right-wing extremism and this alleged online presence associated with Nazis and white supremacists. Um, I'm also told from a source that, and if we take a look at that photo that uh, was um, obtained by our colleague Ed Lavendera from a source at the scene, the photo where you actually see the suspect on the ground. Uh, this is after he was shot and killed. You see next to him this AR-15 style weapon. You can also see on his chest that there appear to be multiple additional magazines of ammunition. Uh, and I'm also told by a source that in the suspect's yeah, he was planning on killing as many people as possible, and as long as possible. He probably was not expecting for there to already be a cop there. Vehicle, authorities recovered multiple firearms. And so, again, you have to – it is chilling to think that but for that police officer who was there that sprung into action, this obviously could have been much, much worse. But a lot of investigation yet to be done, but we are, through our sources, uh, beginning to learn a, a lot more about the suspect, Jim.
All right, Josh Campbell, thank you very much for that new information. We appreciate it. Let me go to Ed Lavendera. He's on uh, the scene. And, Ed, you have more uh, reporting on the police search uh, regarding Garcia. What can you tell us about that? Well, we went to a neighborhood in Dallas uh, that has an address that we believe is connected to the parents of Mauricio Garcia. We spent uh, several hours there this morning speaking with neighbors. And these details that Josh is reporting on of possible connections to right-wing extremism uh, really uh, would be a shock to the, the neighbors who run them. You know, many of them did not speak with this family directly. It was very, you know, superficial uh, kind of connections. They mostly would see him in passing and waving. They described him as someone who was polite. One neighbor did describe that he would often see him uh, walking by himself with a, a, a hoodie on, head covered often, no matter how hot it might be there uh, in his neighborhood in Dallas. Uh, but uh, nothing that uh, anyone got any indication uh, that there would be this kind of potential uh, behavior from their, their neighbor. Uh, but several neighbors did tell us that it had been several months since he had been living there at home with his parents. So that's where we were this morning. And here at the crime scene, Jim, you can see the area uh, back into the parking lot of the outlet mall. This area is still cordoned off where investigators are working. And we've spoken with the source, uh, a, a witness uh, who was here, here yesterday when the shooting transpired and gave us a better uh, indication of the gunman's movements as he arrived here at the outlet mall and began shooting uh, people. Uh, we understand that the shooting took place in very close to in front of the H&M store and then uh, ended at a fat burger restaurant. Um, but we spoke with a witness who was uh, somewhere in the middle of that path, several hundred yards away, and he witnessed this gunman pass right before him. What did you see the gunman wearing? What did he, what, what did he look they like? They had on a black um, a windbreaker. It had something written across the back. It looked like a P to start with. Uh, he had on a black ammo magazine vest on the front, 30 round tight, looked like, and uh, he was pretty much in black. And the way he moved, you thought it was kind of like, was it, did well, he have it? Did he have it? He wasn't running. He was more like deliberately moving. It's like you, so it's hard to explain except, you know, he was under control. And did he have his... Uh, his gun was up, and he was actually shooting in front of the store. We heard the shots as he went by shooting. And that gentleman went on to tell us as he was escorted out of that building by law enforcement and eventually passed by the area where the gunman was shot, he did see several bodies there on the ground. And he also told us that it was just moments after he saw the gunman pass by him that it was the police officer who would, uh, he saw that person pass by the window of the store where they're at uh, and later presumably gunned down this uh, suspect just several businesses down the path from where they were. Jim? Jim, if that cop was un unlucky and taken down the shooter and got taken down himself, it would have been a whole worse situation. He, because he would have been, he, was, he would have been able to, you know, shoot more people and be there longer and he could have racked up, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 bodies. All right, Ed Lavendera, thank you very much for that. Uh, let me go to Ed Davis uh, for his expertise on all of this. Uh, Ed, what do you make of this new reporting coming in from uh, Josh Campbell, our Josh Campbell reporting uh, that a law enforcement source familiar with the investigation is telling CNN uh, that this gunman may have been motivated by uh, right-wing ideology uh, and then it may have been active online uh, sharing posts uh, about neo-Nazis and that sort of thing. What does that tell you at this point? Well, good afternoon, Jim. Uh, what it tells me is that uh, we have still another case of someone who was known to have problems, right, fringe players, whether it be extremism or uh, mental health issues or, or alcohol issues, um, and, and they've um, decided to activate themselves and uh, get, get access to very powerful weapons and, and unlimited amounts of ammunition and decide to go out in a blaze of glory. Um, and, 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 and kill all of these young children. I saw some of the pictures uh, from the scene, and uh, it, it's, it's heartbreaking to, to see another tragedy occur um, and, and to know that there are indicators, that there are, there are lists that can be put together, there are enhanced checks that can be done for people who want to buy this type of equipment, and 
for a lot of reasons, we are incapable in this country of of protecting our own citizens. It's 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 just unconscionable to me. And Ed, does it make any sense to you? It's because right wingers want unlimited access to every single weapon and unlimited ammo, and then they uh, watch news that's all about how they're supposedly under attack and being replaced and they're at war and so they do this besides the fact that if they're nazis they're going to be bigoted and already uh willing and primed to go out and murder people they hate you that we are not hearing from uh law enforcement officials today at a press conference they're not holding a press conference today uh we're having to obtain information about the latest uh in this investigation from our sources does that make any sense to you i mean i can't imagine why they would not do it. And I can't think of the last time we had a mass shooting like this where you didn't have law enforcement out there the next day giving the, the media, giving the country and the rest of the world the latest. Right, Jim. It's a very old-fashioned response to a major tragedy like this. This is what used to happen in the 60s and 70s. Over the years, we've learned how important it is to get valid information out to people. Because if the media doesn't have appropriate and valid information, they start to fill the void with with other pieces of information that might not be correct. And, and you know, the community is is desperate to find out if they're safe. I, I believe me, I've been through this in, in my lifetime. They want to be assured by their public officials that this situation is in hand. So, so it really is, I think it's based on a police department's fear that they're going to say something wrong that's going to be used against them in the future. But really, you really have to show leadership here, grab the bull by the horns, go out there and give the people the valid information that you know exists, even if it's bad news. Because it's if you don't do that, it's going to get worse every hour that goes by.